In this lesson, we'll finish building our Hellcats logo. Okay, so in the previous lesson, we worked on the mouth area of our logo here. And in between lessons, again, I went in and filled in this one shape right here. Also added that little bit of uh, contrast on those two teeth we were missing it on. Now, I've also come in here and begun thinking about some highlights. And I've drawn just a couple of shapes with my pen tool here. Uh, nothing special with these, just uh, drew those freeform with the pen tool. One to highlight sort of the cheekbone here underneath the eye, and then another one just to kind of give a little bit of rim lighting here on the uh, sort of the underside of his nose, or this uh, th this lip here that uh, spans down the side of his face from his nose. Now, I want to go ahead and continue doing that here, but we're going to use some of the tools that we've talked about in the Pathfinder tool, or the, excuse me, the Pathfinder panel, rather. Now, obviously, up until now, we haven't used anywhere close to all the options in here, and you probably won't, but the reason we went through all of these different shape modes and pathfinders in the previous lessons is just so you have a little bit of experience putting your hands on each one of these. So uh, when a unique situation arises where you have an opportunity to use one of these, maybe we didn't use in this logo right here, you know exactly which tool you can come to and reference for that type of look or that type of effect. So uh, I tell you what, let's go ahead and get started here. Now I'd like to go ahead and add a few more highlights on our cat here, one of which I want to go ahead and put right here along the rim of his nose and on his head. So I tell you what, let's go ahead and grab our pen tool. I'm already on my direct selection tool. And we'll go ahead and zoom in here, nice and tight. And I'm going to go ahead and start drawing this shape right about here. Let's go ahead and hit tab to give us a little bit more screen real estate. And I'm going to go ahead and just drop this pen tool. The first anchor point I'm going to drop right on the path here. So I'm going to create sort of a slow, subtle curve right there. And then I'm going to bring that in sort of like that. And I'm going to go ahead and begin taking this path down his forehead, just sort of like that. Now, I'm going to get down here, and I want to turn a sharp corner to kind of complement that corner right there. A little bit further past that, we'll come down, and let's go ahead and draw in that path first here. Maybe we could reposition that if we need to. Again, holding the space bar is a great way to reposition an anchor point as you're drawing the bezier handles. Holding down Alt to reposition this one handle right here. And let's go ahead and send that off at the same angle here. And I don't want that to be too long because I want to come in here and drop another anchor point right about here. Go ahead and reposition that one just a little bit. We can always come in and tweak these bezier handles a little bit uh, in here in just a few moments if we need to. But I'm going to go ahead and send this next uh, bezier handle straight up, sort of like that. We're going to drop another anchor point right here. So I'm just kind of tracing the contours of this cat's forehead and nose right now. Uh, we'll bring another anchor, excuse me, bezier handle this direction. Again, just continuing along, tracing the contours here. This can be sort of the tedious part, is just using the pen tool to get exactly the right shapes uh, that you're looking for. Let's go ahead and reposition that one just a little bit further down. Maybe a little over to the right. Just sort of like that. We'll bring this up, drop one in here, bend that bezier around, dropping the next one here, just about down his nose, bringing another one here, and we'll bring the last one in. Well, let's pull it right around the center here, right out the center, just sort of like that. Now. We've drawn the shape, and I tell you what, let me just go ahead and change the color of it uh, so that we can see some contrast here. I'm going to go ahead and use the same color as this shape right here. So uh, I believe we use this red right here. Now we've obviously got that fill color on the wrong side of this path, so we need to close this path over in this direction. So again, we're going to just bring in some random anchor points right here. And we're going to use my favorite shape build uh, shape mode, and you should be familiar with this by now. We're going to use intersect, but before we do, we need to copy this red shape. Because if you remember, remember, intersect gets rid of everything except the area where the two shapes overlap. So we'll intersect that using a, a permanent intersect, paste back in our cat's head with a control F, and then send it to the back. And you can see here that we've created sort of this highlight, this sort of rim light on the top side of his head. Now, obviously, we may need to come in and adjust some of these bezier handles and anchor points right here. Maybe we could tweak that one just a little bit to smooth that out. Sort of like that. Let's go ahead and undo that, and then just grab this handle and pull it out. You can see how these two handles, or these two handles ending cl so closely together, starting to create a real subtle little corner right there, and I kind of like that. So uh, let me just come in and put some eyeballs on this in a couple of different spots. 
Looks like this one needs a little bit of tuning. I'm not going to tune these too much here, just because, uh, you know, this is a lot of just fine tuning work, and that's really not what we're focusing on this course. We're focusing on using that uh, Pathfinder panel and the Shape Builder tool to help us build a more complex uh, and advanced illustration like this logo right here. So uh, we'll just come in, tweak this one last handle, and we're going to call that good. So what I'm going to come do is we're going to add another highlight over here. Let's go ahead and look at his ear and think about how our light source is going to project a light onto his ear. So I'm going to go ahead and begin this highlight right over here on top of that corner anchor point. Let's go ahead and bring that down, and I'm going to give this sort of a forked highlight. I'm going to have uh, sort of a highlight that ends, starts to come down this inner ear portion of his ear. Let's go ahead and bring that in right about there. And come in with my control key held down and pull that bezier just a little bit, really tweaking that curve up some. And then I'm going to hold down my alt key and twist that one around some as well. Go ahead and do that and bring in another anchor point right about here. Let's go ahead and twist that around, holding Alt, and then we're going to fork this highlight down the top side. Now this highlight on the top side is probably going to extend a little bit further, so I'm going to go ahead and bring that out to right about here for right now. We can again tweak this here in just a little while, and we'll go ahead and bend that bezier and just bring those anchor points out. Now again, we can just use that intersect shape mode to trim the shape down here just like so, pasting in our original shape, and then sending it to the back and giving us exactly the result we're looking for. Now, uh, you can see here how once you've used that intersect shape mode enough, it becomes second nature, and you can do it very, very quickly. In my opinion, super, super helpful, and uh, I would highly recommend getting used to using that because uh, if you do a lot of a vector illustration here inside Illustrator, you'll be using that quite a bit. So uh, i tell you what, let's go ahead and leave that highlight alone for right now. I want to do one more sort of rim highlight right here along, subtly along his cheek and around his lip right here. Now this is a little bit more, a little bit of a more difficult highlight to create, so let's go ahead and switch into outline mode and take a look at the edge we're going to use. We're going to use the edge of of this shape right here. So I'm going to come in in outline mode. Let's come in and begin drawing this highlight. Let's start it right about here. And I'm really only concerned with the outside edge of it. We're going to use our pathfinder uh, or our intersect to basically trim this down just like we've been doing. Let's go ahead and give that a nice thick and thin feel to it here. Reposition that anchor point a little higher up and pull that bezier just a little bit more. And let's go ahead and let's go ahead and bend that bezier around to turn that corner. We'll come in and drop another anchor point. Oh, let's pull one in right about here. And let's pull in one right about, now let's say right here. Now obviously we've got some issues here with our bezier handle, some of them being too long, so I'm going to shorten that one up a little bit. Maybe pull on this one some more down here. Just kind of tweaking this path up, getting it exactly where I want it to be. May even need to reposition an anchor point or two. Just kind of pulling this around. Sometimes it'll help to switch back out of outline mode to do this, but I'm uh, kind of relying just strictly on these lines, looking for a nice smooth path here. Just like so. I think that'll get us where we want to go. So I'm going to go ahead and extend this one out a little bit further here, and I'm going to bring that around, sort of like that, and I'm going to begin drawing another path here. Let's go ahead and bring this one in right about, oh, let's go ahead and bring it in right there in front of that tooth. Right there on top of that anchor point for that tooth actually. And we're going to come in and around and I'm going to connect this, end up connecting it right here at this corner down here. So uh, let's see if we can't maybe do that with one more anchor point there. And then we'll drop one more right there. All right, so we've got that path segment drawn, and I want to come over here and just close this path off by dropping in a couple more anchor points right there. So we've drawn that shape. Let's jump out of outline mode and take a look at what it looks like. Obviously not quite the shape we're looking for, but let's see what we can't do to fit that shape to the area we're, we're trying to fit it in. Now, you know, looking at this a little bit, I may come in and tweak this up just a little bit before we do that. Let's grab that anchor point right there and pull that bezier just a little bit like so, and maybe bump this uh, this anchor point just a little bit down. We can always tweak that a little bit later, but let's go ahead and select that shape, 
actually let's select our red shape right here. Remember this shape right here, I'm going to move it, is the one we're going to use to intersect from. So I'm going to copy that, shift select that one, we'll intersect those two. We've created the, the new shape that we're looking for, so we'll paste back in with a control F and send it back. So uh, again, you can see the intersect tool, very valuable tool. We've created exactly the highlight we were looking for there. Now, you know, there's a few little issues here. These two points come together pretty closely. I'll probably come in and create some more space there. Uh, and this uh, has a little bit of too large of a bulge right here, maybe a little too close to that orange. So just to, to relieve a couple of areas of tension there, that are really kind of drawing our eye in, in these two areas. But uh, hopefully you, you've seen how the Pathfinder in both the shape modes and the Pathfinders inside that panel can really assist us in creating some really great, interesting shapes to use uh, inside our Illustrator artwork. Now, I'd just like to encourage you at this point, uh, keep this panel open when you're creating your own artwork here inside Illustrator. I know I do because I use it quite a bit.